sectional season in the books. It ended last night on the floor of the Times Union Center. The Class AA Finals wrap it up. The Bethlehem girls defeat the Shen girls in the early game. And then in the nightcap, the Shen boys beat Gilderland 47-42. Joining us to talk about it is Steve D'Agostino of Dags Basketball. Dags, section season's over. I'm, I'm happy to have champions crowned, but I'm a little sad it's all done. I know. It's, it's such an exciting time of the year that you kind of want it to, to just keep going. Now, you work with the Shen boys. You went to Gilderland, so so are you feeling for Gilderland, but you're like a proud dad on the other side of things? Yeah, it's it's a, it's a little bit of both for me because we actually started working with Gilderland um, this fall before their season started, and Shen's been our was our first team client along with Scotia. So, obviously, I'm, I'm really happy for Coach Zekas at, uh, at Shen, and, you know, I feel a little bit for, for Coach Parks at, at Gilderland and those guys. And it was a great game. I mean, both teams competed hard, and that's what I just want to see, especially when two of my teams are playing each other. Go out there, compete. Whatever the outcome is, it's the outcome, and you move on. You were at Gilderland. I was at Shen. We were both a part of it. Suburban Council hadn't won a sectional title since 2000. It's a good feeling to have the Suburban Council back on the uh, back on the podium, isn't it? Yeah, it definitely is. And and to be honest, it's not even like a suburban council and, and the old Big Ten thing, but it's more so a public versus private. I mean, there hasn't been public schools that have won championships since really 2001. There's been a couple, but, you know, I don't consider some of them public schools. But besides that, you know, it's, it's more of a public-private. So it's great to see a public school win the AA championship. Yeah, it's really been since those kind of Schenectady teams of the early 2000s that were, you know, that were really good. That, that yeah, Schenectady, Colony, uh, Columbia had some, some really good teams with Craig Ford that were all competing every year for a championship. Absolutely. What was the key to last night's game? Shen wins it by five. It, it felt like more than a five-point game, though. What was the key for Shen? Yeah, I mean, they obviously they played that diamond and won um, play tech. And, you know, I think Shen's game plan would be let somebody else beat you. And, you know, Gilderland had, they had a lot of open shots and, and their role players had a chance to step up and knock down shots and they were they just weren't scoring. Um, you know, the big guy, Cisco, I thought played really, really well when Gilderland got the ball in the paint. Um, they found him, I think he was like 8 for 12 from the field for 17 points. You know, he did his job last night. But, you know, at the end of the day, you know, when, when somebody plays a diamond and one on your best player, they have to find him when he's open, and I thought that Gilliland missed him a couple times, and their, your other players have to make shots, and, and they didn't do a good combination of that. And that being said, they lost by five points. They only, they only scored 42 points, so I think if someone told them before the game, hey, you know, you got to score 48 points to win, they would have taken that. Um, so, you know, it's, it's one of those that will probably haunt them anytime you have a shooting night like that, especially from a good shooting team like Gilliland. You're going to look back on every single shot you've missed. Gilderland established Cisco in the second half. He finished with 17 points. Most of that damage was done in the second half. Should they have gone to him earlier and tried to establish that inside-out game? Yeah, I mean, again, it's it's hard, especially when, when you're going against a diamond one. It's not like they're playing man-to-man where you're saying, okay, let's run our stuff so we get Cisco in the post. But, you know, he was getting all his points when, when the guards for Gilderland decided to rip through, um, attack the basket, and then dump it off to him. So, I, I mean, the bigger thing would have been for the guards on Gilderland to make a concerted effort to, hey, I'm, I'm not going to take this shot. I'm open for a reason. They're playing off me. Let me rip through, get in the paint, and either take a little runner in there or dump it off to Cisco down low. Kevin Herter, one of your top guys in the area, one of, one of everyone's top guys in the area, finishes with 20 points for Shen. Big stage for him. How did he fare, in your opinion? He did awesome. I mean, I was saying to, to some of the guys that I was sitting down there with last night, I just love watching him play. He's got a high IQ. Uh, you know, he's never high with the high and low with the lows, and, and he's just kind of like running everything out there. He's, he's, he's the true definition of a floor general. Um, I thought he played really well last night, and he didn't even shoot the ball well. I thought he made some great passes. He attacked the rim. I just love when he's being aggressive because um, I think he can get a shot off whenever he wants. He can get to the rim whenever he wants. So when he's attacking the basket – it opens up his outside shot, and obviously he had a monster dunk last night too. That was unbelievable. We know he's got Division One offers in hand. We're sure there's going to be more of him. In your opinion, play the game with me. What uh, what what's his ceiling at the Division One level? To be honest, I think his ceiling is is high major. You know, you're talking about BC, Notre Dame, schools like that. 
you know, will he end up going there? I don't know. Um, I'm big into, you know, you go somewhere where you're going to fit into the system and, and you're going to play a lot. Uh, you know, you Albany loves him. Um, you know, Davidson likes him. He's got offers from Duquesne, some other A-10 schools. You know, the, the good thing about Kev is, is he just wants to play, right? So, you know, he's, he's, not, he's not caught up in, hey, I got to go to the highest, you know, the highest level possible. So, you know, if those offers do come, I think he'll make a choice that, that benefits himself in the long run, not, not reach it. Steve D'Agostino of Dags Basketball will get you out of here on this. The high school season over, the college season is still going. You Albany, both the women and the men, will host the America East title. We had the MAC tournament here last weekend. It's just a good time for basketball in the area in general. Yeah, absolutely, and 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 anytime that you Albany or and or Sienna is doing well, it just hypes up everything else around it. Um, you Albany's had an unbelievable year. Um, the guys that they brought in have been doing really well. Everything you know with Huli and his mom has has allowed this team to step up a little bit too, and it's been great to see. But you know, I I have connections with you Albany. My brother coached there. I've been around the program, um, just watching as a fan for for years as well. So. You know, I, I love when they do well. I have a ton of respect for, for Will Brown. So, you know, I'm hoping they can they can go in there Saturday, get this win, and, and you know, bring the hype of the NCAA tournament back to Albany again for a third straight year. It's going to be a tough battle for sure on Saturday morning, 11 a.m., is the uh, the Danes with the, the tough task of trying to stop Jameel Warney, the reigning conference player of the year in the America East. But the Danes have great guards, Dags. Evan Singletary's one of them. You've seen him play a few times. I, I think he's phenomenal. What do you think? Yeah, I He's unbelievable, and, and you know, championship teams, you, you have to have players that, you know, at the end of game step up, and he's hit like three or four game winners. You know, this game on Saturday is not too big for him, so, you know, you're talking in the backcourt, you have Evan Singletary, who's hit game winners, who, who obviously can play in big games. Peter Hooley is a big game player, and Ray Sanders, who's an all-conference player and an all-defensive uh, player for the America East, I mean, that's an unbelievable backcourt. So, you know, there's probably, you know, five of the top seven players in the America East playing in the championship game um, this Saturday. So it's definitely going to be a battle. And, again, I, it's one of these toss-ups.